Hello folks, Kent Hovind here. I got to go to South Florida for a family wedding, but uh, we're going to record this about God's amazing duck. Hi, it's me, Creaky, and in today's video we'll be talking about all the things that Kent Hovind gets wrong. Well, that's not strictly true. I mean, I'd never fit everything that clown gets wrong into one video, would I? So we'll stick with evolution for today. If evolution was as easy to disprove as he makes it out to be, we'd all still be monkeys. But nope, we're here talking about it on YouTube. So sit back, grab a banana, and let's get going, shall we? Please subscribe. Right, just quickly before we go any further, because even I've got to keep the lights on, today's video is sponsored by Aura. I'm excited to partner with Aura, an easy to use app that includes everything you need to protect your personal information. Aura scans the dark web where criminals sell stolen information, looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. It alerts you fast if it finds anything. Not only that, but Aura also helps you fight back against websites that make your personal information public by automatically requesting removal of your info. This helps reduce robocalls. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries so you'll know if somebody is trying to open a loan or credit card in your name without your knowledge. And their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And they protect your devices from viruses, malware, spyware, and more, so the bad guys can't break in. Or it even helps you manage what your kids can do on their devices. You can restrict specific apps, set screen time limits, and even set focus times to ensure your child is doing their homework instead of binging YouTube videos. And their password manager lets you store and access access your online password securely and conveniently. Maybe you already have an app that does all these things, but with Aura you don't have to download and pay for seven separate apps to do all this. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a free two week trial with my link which is below and you will be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over that two week period. Go to aura.com forward slash creaky to start your free trial, it's also linked below in the video description or you can scan this QR code. Right, let's get back to the video, shall we? If you believe it all happened by chance, that's fine. You can believe what you want, but don't call it science. Admit it's a religion. Easy, tiger. Believe what happened. I haven't even got comfortable yet. Just straight into it then, is it? I'll have to assume that you're talking about evolution, which is pretty standard for you. And no, sorry, Kent. As usual, you are spectacularly wrong. So you know the whole evolution thing that scientists talk about? Well, some people, and by some people I mean Kent, think it's just a big old made up story. Which is massively ironic for a man that actually believes the Bible is literal. <laughs> and don't make everybody pay to teach that stupid idea to kids in school, okay. Don't forget to pay your taxes, kids, or you could end up in prison for 10 years as well. Isn't that right, Kent? People like Kent don't believe that evolution explains things well enough, mainly because it goes against their religious beliefs. They say it isn't based on real evidence and that it's just a bunch of people's opinions. But the thing is, evolution is like a detective story where scientists gather up all the clues and evidence to figure out how things happened. And trust me, there's a ton of evidence to show that evolution is real. Just like you can't deny that ice cream is delicious, you can't deny the facts when it comes to evolution. The science community agrees. It's a solid explanation for the diversity of life on Earth. Comments on comments. I made a comment after last night's Bible study on the the uh, the duck. <laughs> now far be it from me to criticize the way another man speaks, but having no notable accent myself, I feel like I'm very well positioned to do just that. Why are you saying duck like that, Kent? It's it's duck. It's not duck. <laughs> hey, evolutionists! At nine minutes and thirty seconds, I show how male ducks lose their penis. Careless. At the end of mating season and grow a new one next year. Ah, well okay then. How did that evolve? Simple question, can you give me a step by step? The first one that lost it, what did he do next year? But you just said he grew a new one. Anyway, for millions of years they lost it but didn't know how to grow a new one. What was that, Ken? For millions of years they lost it but didn't know how to grow a new one. I thought that's what you said for millions of years. But I thought that you think that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. You need to be careful. Little slip of the tongue there, eh, Kent? <laughs> Which reminds me of an old Welsh saying, be careful when performing oral sex on your girlfriend because one slip of the tongue and you're in the shit. 
Well, somebody commented on that and said, uh, Anthony said, obviously that's not how it went. So you could have attempted to explain it. What he's trying to say there is, I could have tried to give an evolutionary story because they all they have is stories made up of this is how it might have happened over millions of years. Oh, brilliant. Lots of irony in today's video then. Anthony's got a fair point though. You could have tried to explain that but I think I may be able to offer some insight. You haven't got a clue how to explain it. Or maybe I'm wrong and you could have explained it, but chose not to because you couldn't think of a way of explaining it that didn't completely destroy everything you believe in. Now, is it just me or does Kent seem a little more confused than usual? Where's my salt shaker? So that'll be a yes then. <laughs> the male reproductive organ on birds is mostly tissue, so it's not strange that it grows back. Anthony, it's not strange to you that it can just fall off and grow back. Hey, what? Drop your arm off and grow a new one. That's not answering Anthony either, Kent, is it, you little scam? Well, for a start, our arms haven't evolved to grow back if needed. The duck penis, on the other hand, has. While the male reproductive organs on ducks fall off and grow back, Humans are not able to do that. We don't have the same regenerative capabilities as birds, which you know, Kent. But as always, when you can't think of an answer, just make some childish remark. And I for one hate people who do that. That's like saying male deer don't know how to regrow their antlers. Actually it isn't, because again, a male deer is an animal that has regenerative capabilities. We are not. They don't need to know how to do that. They have the fastest growing tissue on the head, so it grows back every year. To them, to the evolution, this is, he really thinks he answered the question. Well, to be fair, he hasn't really answered the question. He's just pointing out other examples. Maybe he's realized that it's completely pointless to try and argue with somebody as far gone as you can. And he'd be right. You've been using the same tired old arguments for decades. Explain to me, Kent, what is the kind exactly? Dogs produce dogs, cows produce cows, and hovins produce morons, clearly. <laughs> you don't need to know how to do that. They have the fastest growing tissue, let's see. They can afford to lose it when it's not necessary. I agree, you can lose your antlers, that's not necessary. I think losing the penis is a different story, Anthony. Okay, talk to mom. Okay. Male ducks lose their penis after mating because of a process known as traumatic insemination. During the process, the male duck forces his sperm into the female duck's reproductive tract, often causing injury to both ducks. And as a result, the penis breaks off. Anybody else his eyes water in? And this behavior ensures that the male duck's sperm will be the only sperm to fertilize that female duck's eggs. So there you go, Kent. That's why you're welcome. Females have long tubular vaginas like this one on the left of the Peking duck, which may have co-evolved to prevent forced copulation. Now I want you to watch how many times they use the word evolved in this article on, uh, where was it at? Uh, Scientific American. Otherwise it would not have gotten published. Hmm, I'll have to give this one some thought. Why would they keep using the word evolved in a scientific paper about evolution? Why would they keep using the word evolved in a science? Three hours later. Now I can't be certain, but I will give it my best guess. Maybe because evolve it. I can't. I just can't do it. I don't want to seem stupid. Does it bother you when people think you are stupid, Kent? And I know it's not really a fair comparison on account of you actually being stupid and me not being stupid, but I had to ask because in every single video I've ever uploaded to YouTube, one of my main objectives is to try and make sure that the information I share is as accurate as possible and can be really easily double checked by anyone who wants to. Or what I would give to be able to make no effort and just upload any old crap to YouTube. Tell me, Kent, what's it like? If they had hinted that maybe the duck's reproductive system was designed, it never would have been published. I completely agree, Kent. Nor should it have been, because scientific journals tend not to be that keen on publishing things that can't be backed up by evidence. It's not like religious texts where you can just write any old nonsense and people will blindly believe it just because. And then the atheists say, see, you guys don't publish in scientific journals. They won't print it if it doesn't praise evolution. It won't be printed. What about all the articles printed in scientific journals that have got nothing to do with evolution? I think what you meant to say is they won't print anything that would be considered to be a fundamentalist belief. With extra emphasis on the mental part, obviously. Special Ops YouTube, you're reporting. Yeah, weird that, isn't it? It's almost as if they will only print things that people can actually prove 
or demonstrate. They may have co-evolved to prevent forced copulation by unwanted males. According to a report this week in PLOS One, whatever that is. PLOS One is a peer-reviewed scientific journal, Kent. That's probably why you don't know what it is. Although being a man of science or be a creation science. I don't know why that's so funny, creation science. I would have thought that you'd have a subscription. Oh well. I did a debate at Holyoke, Massachusetts. I'll do another one anytime, guys. All you professors, bring it on, okay? Ken, do you really think you win any of the debates you take place in? That's pretty cool. You give the same answers to every point raised. It's boring and you're beyond useless. You couldn't pour water out of a boot with the instructions written on the heel. Some ducks grow phallus as long as their body. In the fall, it will disappear only to reappear in the spring. Mm. Well, what a coincidence. Me too. It's fine in the summer, but in the winter months, it looks like I've got two belly buttons. This guy's the champion, said Patricia Brennan, a behavioral ecologist leaning over the nether regions of a duck. A Mellor's duck from Madagascar, to be specific, to carefully coaxing out his phallus. What a job these people have. Now, I hate to admit, I hate to admit to Kent, but I've got to agree, sorry, I've got to agree with Kent. What the hell does he put on his CV? Duck wanker. So what do you do for a living, Mr. Jones? Oh, I toss off ducks. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, I wank off ducks. Next. <laughs> what a job. I'm sure the ducks are thinking, oh no, here she comes again, guys. Oh no. When she first visited in January, the phallus were the size of rice grains. Not many, now many of them are growing rapidly. Yeah, I bet there are those dirty little duckies. Although to be fair, if I had a female doctor calling around to measure mine, I suppose the same thing would happen. But anyway, where were we? The anatomy of ducks is especially bizarre, considering that 97% of all bird species have no phallus at all. Most male birds just deliver their sperm through an opening. Dr. Brennan is investigating how this sexual wonder of the world came to be. Now keep in mind, you cannot use God did it as your answer. And there's a very good reason for that, isn't there? Because he didn't! Unless, of course, you can prove otherwise without using the Bible. Gazing at the enormous organs... <laughs> she asked herself a question that apparently no one had asked before. So what does the female look like? A fair question. Good question. Okay. Obviously, you can't have something like that without some place to put it in. You need a garage to park the car. Be good. A garage to park the car. <laughs> you keep setting them up, Kent, and I'll keep knocking them down. I just realized something as well. So far, all you've done is read things off your beloved slides. Are you actually going to refute anything that's been said at any point? And I know all you ever say is, the Bible says. But come on, this is low effort even for you, Kent. The lower overduct, the equivalent of the vagina in birds, is typically a simple tube. But when Dr. Brennan dissected some female ducks, she killed ducks for this experiment. Where's the... Hope she served them with some pancakes and spring onion and a dash of plum sauce. Wait, what? Duck is delicious. I heard she tried to dissect them when they were still alive, Kent, but they kept flying off. Perhaps, she wondered, the two sexes were co-evolving. There they go again. With elaborate lower overducts driving the evolution of longer phallus. Oh, so the female decided to make hers longer, therefore the male had to decide to make his longer. Well, decided is a piss poor way to describe it, but in simple terms that a six-year-old child and a young earth creationist can understand, the male duck didn't fill up the female duck. So evolution did its thing so that the ducks could do theirs. And you can call it fake all you want, Ken. That doesn't make it any less factual. But before we carry on, I've got a joke about a duck for Ken. Do you want to hear it, Ken? What time do ducks get up? At the quack of dawn. <laughs> do you know any jokes, Ken? Do you, you want to tell me one? And don't say Matt Powell. I mean, we all know he's a joke, but go on, t tell me a joke. With a wide range of mating systems. Where's my salt shaker? <laughs> hmm. We believe evolution theory is the dumbest and most dangerous religious cult in the history of the world. <laughs> it's a mental illness. This theory is the greatest hindrance to scientific advancement in the history of the world. It has contributed nothing to the field of science. Nothing. You disagree with me? Call Standing for Truth. Schedule a debate. No, thanks.
Thanks. Now, Kent Hovind's views on evolution are misguided and definitely not supported by any scientific evidence. The evidence for evolution is vast, but Kent's religious beliefs appear to be influencing his understanding of the subject, as we can all see. Also, Kent's tendency to make childish remarks and avoid answering questions directly is unbecoming and unhelpful in any serious discussion. Thanks for watching, everyone, and don't forget to click the link below aura.com forward slash creaky to try 14 days free and let Aura go to work protecting your private information online. You'll be glad you did. And so will I. I'm not gonna lie. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Love you, bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.